Welcome to Just Swing at X-Plane 11 Airwolf. Today at the request of a subscriber, I decided to show you how to tweak the lady in Plane Maker. So you can see here, Plane Maker is actually in the X-Plane 11 folder. So you just open it up. The lady is already selected, but if it isn't, you go to File and Open. Alright, so let's start off with Auth. So you can see, you can set it to Experimental Flight Mode, that is important. You can change anything over here. And nothing over here is really all that important though. Next viewpoint. Now this is a little bit more important. This is where you change the maximum speeds. As you can see here I have Mach 2 as a maximum speed with positive and negative G's of 18. If you want to know more about each of these items just put your mouse over it. Make sure the hoops HUD is selected as well. That is also a nice selection to have. The windshield is plexiglass or has visible scratches in direct sunlight. Aircraft and panel visibility is also important and this is a setup that I currently use. Anything else here is not really relevant for what I want to show you today. Let's go look at limits. This is only for airspeed indication and altitude display, nothing else. It doesn't change the performance factors at all. Right, 2D panel. So this is my custom 2D panel. It's a pretty simple thing to, to use, so you select the tab here, which one you want. So flares for instance, and you click and drag. And you place it exactly where you want it. Now I did a little bit of research and I used a little bit of my own creativeness for creating this particular 2D panel. I really wanted to be able to see certain enunciators, engine power, stall and radar as well as be able to change radar distance using this view. So I tried my hardest to keep it as similar to what you'd see in Airwolf as possible and this is what I came up with. Bear in mind that this version of Airwolf is meant to be a 2022 upgrade so she's definitely going to be more advanced than what we saw in the 80s. Of course, if you click on an item, you can change the actual size at the bottom here as well. That takes a little bit of trial and error, and sometimes it can be quite a mission to do. The 3D panel is a lot more complicated. Now this bundle here and all of these at the bottom here I can't actually change. I've tried before, but it, yeah, for some reason it just doesn't work. But everything else is modifiable. Um, again, it's just click and drag. You click what you want and drag to where you want it and change size accordingly. Now, I had decided 
to use this top side here on the panel mostly for additional information instead of the radio stack or autopilot stack which is what you usually find in aircraft if I recall the Bell 222 has a radio stack over here but the enunciators are as accurate as I can get them for the Bell 222 um, and that wasn't in the original design Right, engine specs. This is important. Critical altitude 11,000 feet. Max throttle available. I kept it at 1.2. The afterburner was originally on 90, but I've changed it to 100. And for some reason, I've lost the afterburner as well. Since Airwolf does have reverse thrust available in flight, I had to add it here as well. Unfortunately, max power over here could not be changed. I'm not quite sure why, but on most aircraft you can do it. However, max jet engine power, you can modify it, and I've put it in exactly the same amount of what is suggested from Wikipedia, how powerful Airwolf's turbo engines actually are. I have made the turbo's thrust vector enabled as well, that improves the maneuverability. Nothing else here is actually important. The autopilot I've also changed a little bit, but very little. Pressurization is extremely important as well. This is something that you definitely need to make sure you set properly. Control geometry, now this is where it gets very complicated. I actually haven't really worked much on it. I did a little bit, but uh, the latest update to the lady from the original creator, uh, he managed to improve the maneuverability quite considerably. But yes, I have tweaked it a little bit. Weight and balance, again, very important. Do your homework, make sure that you put in the right figures and you should be right. Right, where I've done most of the work, the artificial stability, I've tweaked 
everywhere here as best I can. Uh, this is very much trial and error and it took me quite a long time to get it according to what I see on screen and my own flying techniques as well. So play around a bit with this. This you can actually tweak in game. Um, I'll show you how to do it in a moment's time as well. Weapons is something I extensively changed. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically I would suggest choosing an item like a missile and placing it in the default place, which is 0000000, zero, 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 zero all over there. Um, okay, now that sucks. Hold on a second for me, please. That's never actually happened to me before. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Okay, so we're back here. Okay, I think I know what the problem is. Unfortunately, I cannot hold down my push to talk button because I think that's what caused the problem in that particular window. So what I was saying is you place your weapon, preferably a missile, in the default place and you can actually turn the lady and see where the weapon is. Then you simply change the figures that I showed you earlier um, and you'll literally see the missile moving. So placing it that way is the best way to do it. Yeah, you can see how to move the lady as well. So yeah, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get used to it, it's actually quite simple. Special equipment, chaff and flares, that's also important. Alright, I think that's all for this part of the video. Stay tuned, in a few seconds time, we'll be in X-Plane 11 and I will be showing you how I set up the flight yoke. Alright, welcome back. Okay, so let's have a look at the flight yoke setup. Now, one thing I've noticed, if I'm using more than one flight yoke, I often have to select the profile and then unplug both flight yokes and plug them back in again. So let me do that quickly. All right, so now that I've done that, you can see I've got three different controllers. The Xbox controller I actually only use for recording purposes. This allows me to change views more easily and control the replay options. This is my main joystick that I use. Always remember to calibrate. That is highly important. So For this lever over here, I've selected Collective. That is highly important for the lady. This is what you use to go up and down, basically. This is the main rotor system, um, not the turbos. 
the hat switch I have mostly used for trimming the rudder and for controlling the zoom for the radar system. Button number five, you can see over here, I've used as the engage starter number three. This gives me the turbo's sound. When I press it, it does a whole burst of turbo's sound. Button number six, over here, I used for firing air to ground weapons. Seven, deploy shaft. Eight over here is fire air to air selection. Number nine, this button over here, deploy flares or sunburst. Number ten and eleven is my target select up and down. Twelve and thirteen is my flaps which is actually the weapons deployment system uh, 14 and 15 is to select which weapon um, so that actually activates the weapon system properly For 14 activates it and 15 deactivates it right for the wing wing force 3d now this is my very old fly choke and it no longer has the force feedback ability which means it no longer centers so i use it for landing gear um, so the y-axis is to control the landing gear the throttle is now for the turbos. I use that for the turbos throttle. I don't really use the function on the hat switch here. I thought it would work, but it actually doesn't. You can see here, uh, brakes, um, I use that the trigger for maximum brakes and it locks so just have to uh, click it once and it stays locked in position or out of position um, target camera pointer I still haven't really figured out how to use that yet um, I still have to try to figure that out I used flaps here as well but most of the stuff here I don't actually really use speed brakes I use and hold thrust reverse at max I use and that's pretty much it so if you've got any questions feel free to comment below I'll be happy to answer if I can shout out to my subscriber who actually asked me to do this video I'm quite chuffed and pleased that someone is interacting and asking questions. So this will be it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and click on notifications. And also please share with your friends. If you've got any Airwolf fans, come on, let them know about this channel. We have finally reached our 100 subscribers and we are looking forward to breaking the 1000 subscriber as soon as possible, I hope. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next week.